Welcome back to another Arkham Hot Takes. This is part two. I think I did part one about like 10 days ago or some shit, but we're back and we're going to be going back into it. My hot take was that the Arkham Knight Batman Beyond suit is fucking trash. It's the worst suit in the game. I got triggered. I'm not going to lie. Everybody was saying that the Arkham City suit looked bad. So, you know, I'm putting it out there that the Arkham Knight suit is worse. Yeah, what now? Yeah, you want to bring up the hot takes? We're going to bring them. All right, the first one is that the main Batman suit in Arkham Knight is one of the worst Batman suits, I'm assuming, ever. That's a hot take. I personally think it's amazing. It's inspiration for a lot of suits, and honestly, it feels like it's a it's a, a accumulation of a lot of Batman history all into one, and it feels really good. It feels like a natural progression of the Arkham games, so I would say that is a, that's a hot, hot take. Another one is that Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate is the best Arkham game. I don't think I can get into I mean, if somebody has a reason why, maybe they like the aesthetic and the feel, but the gameplay fucking looks like it's trash, and it contradicts a lot of the Arkham games. Just saying. Just saying. Isn't Solomon Grundy in that shit somehow? Like, how? How? This one's pretty funny, and honestly, I don't know if I really agree with it or not. Buzzcut slash bald Tim Drake as Robin looked badass in my opinion. And him being older in his mid-twenties was and is better than a teenage Robin. You know, I kind of agree with the older Robin. It kind of makes sense for an older Robin to be Robin. You know, it doesn't make sense for a, a, like a 12-year-old to be Robin. In a real world, and I guess Arkham is a little bit more grounded in terms of what they can get away with in reality, you know? But also the buzz cut ball of Tim Drake thing is something that a lot of people were really like meh about they don't really like it because it just makes tim drake look like a fucking 30 year old and it's kind of goofy and in the in the comics he has flowing hair and he's like a teenager so it's like a 180 of the comics and you know i don't know where i stand on this but that's that's definitely a hot take people don't like ball tim drake whatsoever and i think that's that's pretty funny that he does um so he says, I think uh, any other playable character in Arkham series is more fun than playing as just Batman. I'm not sorry, lol. I guess. I kind of like Nightwing. You know, I like the way Nightwing flows in the gameplay almost a lot more than Batman. His movesets are actually a lot more visually stunning than Batman. Batman does a lot of cool shit, but I feel like Nightwing, the way he moves is cooler. Catwoman, the way she flows around the map and does her shit with the whip, that's really cool too. The only problem with their character designs is that they don't have as much as Batman. They don't have, like, a lot of them don't have disarms. They can't break guns in half and shit. A lot of them can't do a lot of what Batman can do, and they have, like, literally three gadgets each. So, you know, in regard to their accessibility, it's a lot more limited. But if they had a lot more, I feel like they'll be miles better than Batman is. Origins had the best Batman voice. Conroy Iconic was too monotone. I'd rather listen to the angry and emotion in Roger Craig Smith, but this is just my opinion. I kind of agree, and and I think it's hard because I think there's another one in here that says that Kevin Conroy is very flat, and he really is in the Arkham games. Like, I was just listening, I was just playing Arkham Knight, in the elevator scene, like, if there could have been a lot, like, that's probably the most he's emoted in terms of, like, actual raw emotion where he feels sad in many ways but even still like the moments with jason todd when he's telling him you're robin you know it just feels all flat and it feels like he's not really putting his all into it and i i feel like there, there's a lot more that kevin conroy could have done for batman in these games but in a lot of ways he wasn't given a lot to work with but not only the writing but by the direction as well they probably just told him to, to keep it like that as well not to mention if you listen to like the behind the scenes he sounds a lot different than what they put him into the game as well. So I think that also could have been part of the game developer's fault with the audio as well. Arkham Origins is no longer underrated. It was back when it released, but not anymore. I agree. The, the amount of people that told me in my last video that Arkham Origins is over or underrated is it's ridiculous. It's not underrated when everybody calls it underrated. It's overrated at that point. Um, I think a lot of people put it in higher regard than two of the Arkham games, Arkham Asylum, and sometimes even Arkham Knight. People think the Arkham Origins is way better. People think the story and the cutscenes are miles better than all the Arkham games. So I think that Arkham Origins is not underrated. I don't even think that's a hot take anymore to say that it is underrated. I think it's a hot take to say that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, th I think it is a hot take to say that it's underrated. But I think it's, a, it's you know, completely reasonable to say that it's overrated because so many people think that it's just the best thing ever. And it's, it's really, 
<laughs> it's really not. They had two years to make it, and there's a lot of borrowed assets and a lot of glitches when it came out. But I digress. This one's a funny one. Actually, a lot of people were saying this. Arkham City was the worst in the series. The atmosphere wasn't creepy like the rest. I mean, it wasn't really going for that. Catwoman somehow got around all the helicopters, I guess. It didn't do with the detective side of Batman at all. They killed Joker's best, Batman's best friend. <laughs> Okay, so on and so forth. I I mean, I guess that's a good hot take. You got your reasons down too, so you know I commend you and whatnot. One of its kind uh, comic tie-ins isn't co canon. Eh. Bane was done lazily. Bane's done lazily every game except Origins, so that's not a real that's not a real good <laughs> argument. Joker was annoying in Arkham Knight, and not in the way that it was intended. I genuinely wish he was he wasn't in the game. You know, I kind of agree. I wish he was kind of less in the game. I don't think he, he needed to be, like, every 10 seconds you see him and he says something stupid. Like, I, I kind of think a lot of the emotional weight was taken off when he came in and said some stupid shit. But I think he was necessary in the game. Um, I think he needed to be in the game in some way to say goodbye to Batman in many ways. Because they didn't really get that in the, in the Arkham City. Arkham Origins had the best suit roster of the whole series. While City had a more small and primitive suit selection, and Knight has an issue of unnecessary militarized redesigns of costumes. Origin has a huge variety of costumes that span the whole history of the character, with a nice blend of serious and goofy designs. I agree, you know, I don't think a lot of people really think about that, but that is very, very true. Out of all of the skins in all of the Arkham games, I think Arkham Origins does it the best, and honestly, I genuinely wish that we got a lot of those skins back in Arkham Knight, because those were really, really cool. We got, like, the White Knight skin, you know, where he was, like, the, the White Lantern. We got a bunch of very random ones. I think we got the Batman 1 million skin, which was very, very, very weird. Like, for Arkham Knight, again, yeah, the random militarization redesign of Arkham Knight or, or Batman Beyond. Why? Why did they need to do that? That was so unnecessary. I'm sure they did that for a few other ones, too. They just felt very militaristically redesigned and very different from what they really looked like and personally like a lot of the suit selections in arkham knight is very weak and same thing with arkham city very weak arkham asylum doesn't even have any suit selections you have to wear an armored suit if you want to change it so arkham origins definitely is the best one they went all out with it and i personally think that that is definitely a bonus for arkham origins here's two more people saying that city is the least good of all the arkham games god damn uh, people overhated any Arkham game that's not City, looking for plot holes in every game, but not the ones that are in City. I mean, there are, like, plot holes in City, but they handle them better than all the other games. Like, in Arkham Knight, Jason Todd appears out of nowhere. That's a fucking plot hole. A massive plot hole. Even if they reference him in the past, it's a giant plot hole in the Arkhamverse. Um, and, and also, Batman still seeing Joker or becoming the Joker just doesn't make sense at all. Uh, Arkham City definitely does have a lot of shit, and again, Arkham Origins is an amazing story and overhated. I think it's overloved, so, you know, again, I, I think there's a lot of back and forth there with Arkham Origins, and again, people saying Arkham City sucks. I'm surprised. Here's another one saying that Roger Craig Smith was a better Batman than Kevin Conroy. Kevin was never sold me on being Batman, and I found Roger's voice for Br Batman and Bruce to be raw and filled with emotion. Plus, in the games, he just sounds way too old for the role. I feel like he gets used, overused in general. I think there are moments where Batman's just, like, talking to himself that didn't need to be done within, like, a lot of the Kevin Conroy Arkham games. And Roger Craig Smith, it doesn't seem like he's really talking to himself a lot of the times. And when he does, you know, you... I don't know. There is something about Roger Craig Smith's young Batman voice that sounds really, really satisfying to listen to. So, you know, I think that is... A hot take that a lot of people aren't going to agree with is Roger Creek Smith is better than Kevin Conroy. But I kind of honestly agree. There's many things that he does better with the voice of Batman. Rocksteady needed Dini. And in Arkham Knight, it shows. Yeah, I agree. They definitely let a lot of the characters slip within the characterization. And even Batman himself, it just, a lot of things just did not make sense. And I think Paul Dini could have flushed out a lot of the characters in the plot lines that he was going for in Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. He set forward a lot of things that he was going to do but then arkham knight they didn't have him so they they just kind of did what they thought he was going to do it's a weird mix-up and i wish they had paul dini Ooh, an interesting one is scarecrow was more interesting and scary in asylum than he was in night i don't agree at all i think in night he had a very fun dynamic of trying to keep batman alive and trying to like humiliate batman and he was more interesting in night uh in terms of scary i guess he did more to like 
fuck with Batman in Asylum, right? right? Mentally, like in terms of putting him in those worlds randomly. But I also think that Joker's a big aspect of fucking with Batman too. And it might not be scary, but it's scary for Batman. So I find that one interesting. I, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think Scarecrow's better at night or in Asylum? The GCPD mission in Arkham Origins, where you infiltrate the GCPD and beat Brandon up, is the best mission in the entire Arkhamverse. Wow, that's a really good take. You know, you don't really hear a lot of people talking about individual missions, which one's the best. You know, you only hear like boss battles or something. And, you know, that's a good one because that does flesh out the world a lot. You get to see Gordon and Barbara talk and you get to see all, you know, the police, like how they feel about Batman. And Batman just being in there trying to infiltrate a GCPD is a really cool plot line. I really like what they did there. So I kind of agree there that it is one of the best missions in the entire series and i want to know what you guys think as well what do you guys think is the best arkham mission in the entire arkham games and do you think that that's a hot take as well i think a lot of these were a hot take i think a lot of these were good as well and i can't wait for the next edition of this series i can't wait to hear what you guys uh, have to say next time so thank you guys for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe for more videos in the future and i'll see you guys in my next one peace out